8,000 years earlier than Christ, and flying saucers lands on Earth in the center of a small village. A few hundred years later, archaeologists find out the remains of a settlement and massive disk with hieroglyphs in the equal place. The study of artifacts is entrusted to Professor Langford, who arrives at the bottom along with his daughter Catherine. Numerous extra decades pass. Having become an antique girl, Catherine Langford arrives at an assembly of scientists, where Professor Daniel Jackson, a weirdo who no one takes seriously, speaks. Catherine invites Jackson to her car and offers him an interesting project work on ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. Doctor Jackson arrives at the military base and is shown a disc found years ago. Just by looking at the symbols, Jackson writes a transcript, annoying the professor, who has been trying to unravel the ancient writing for several years. The scientist's work impresses Colonel O'Neill, who has also been assigned to work on an unknown artifact in case Catherine's version of a parallel world is confirmed. Jackson works all night long on the solution, and finally he comes across a newspaper with an image of the starry Orion, which matches the picture on the disc. After listening to the professor, the generals show him the second part of the find, a ring that was found along with the disc. The scientists trigger the ring following Daniel's instructions and after a few minutes a passage appears in the center of the device. Surrounding the gate with military personnel, the scientists launch a probe into it, which should give information about what is on the other side. The probe is sucked in and in a minute it disappears from the radar but the scientists manage to notice that it has traveled to the other side of the universe. Hearing that the military wants to shut down the project, Jackson suggests that it be sent through the gate. O'Neill is frightened by the idea, as he has already seen the remains of strange creatures found with the device. Sending Jackson on a perilous journey, Catherine gives him the pendant. The woman hopes it will bring the boy good luck and he promises to return alive to give the jewelry back. The scientists launch the ring again and a team Colonel O'Neill and his soldiers and Professor Jackson head to it. Professor Jackson stops at the entrance for a moment, but as soon as he plunges his face in, the portal itself transports him across the universe. At Jack's command, the soldiers head for the exit which leads them out into the desert out of a huge pyramid. Jack instructs the soldiers to quickly gather soil to sample so they can return home in an hour, but Daniel admits that the gate doesn't work and he doesn't know how to fix it. The soldiers don't accept the strange scientist into their company, and when he walks away, they throw his suitcase of books. Picking them back up, Jackson notices footprints in the sand. At the same time, O'Neill, secretly from the team, is assembling a rocket that should prevent an alien invasion if it comes to that. After tracking where the tracks lead, Jackson discovers an animal that looks like a giant bull. The curious scientist tries to make contact with it, but by the time the team finds him, the bull accidentally hooks the professor with a rope, taking him to a small settlement. Jackson tries to speak to the natives, but they do not understand the language of the guests, and noticing the pendant around his neck, the natives fall to their knees. The soldiers look around and see the chief being brought to them on the same bowl. The company heads to the town, where an ancient shield depicting the eye of the god Ra is unveiled for the guests. The feast is abruptly interrupted by a siren call. The colonel is about to return to the pyramid, but the chief does not let him out, explaining that a violent sandstorm is gathering outside the gate. The chief prepares a rich dinner for the guests, but Jack is more interested in how they can get home. Professor Jackson asks the chief for help, but as soon as the old man sees that the guest is going to pee in the sand, he ends the feast and the scientist is taken to his chambers, trying to distract him with a massage and a visit from a young beauty. Daniel refuses the girl's services, much to the chieftain's and her dismay, so he allows her to stay in his room and even tries to find some common ground with her. It proves difficult, but Jackson manages to discover that the girl knows a symbol that can help them return home. The remaining soldiers in the pyramid catch the signal, but the storm has completely lost contact with O'Neill. At the same moment, something strange begins to happen in the hall and the boys take up arms, preparing to meet the uninvited guests. The soldiers hide behind columns, but it doesn't help someone mysterious shuts down the military one by one. Unaware of what's going on at the base, O'Neill smokes quietly in his room, telling a local boy what a lighter is. The curious boy reaches for the gun as well, but Jack yells at him pulling the gun, remembering how his son accidentally pulled the trigger and died. Showery, an acquaintance of Jackson's, leads the scholar into a dusty dungeon and the professor sees many hieroglyphics on the walls, listening to his friend pronounce their names correctly. 
O'Neill becomes nervous communication with the camp is lost and Jackson is missing somewhere. The colonel enlists the help of local teenagers and thanks to them, he finds the professor in the dungeon. Daniel tells his friend that he managed to learn the ancient legend about the god Ra who appeared on earth to prolong his life by taking over a human body. Then he forbade reading and writing, so that none of his descendants would know the truth. Tired of the legends and stories, Jack orders everyone to return to the pyramid. As they approach the base, Jack sees that the pyramid has changed shape and seems to be flying through the air. Armed, he goes inside and realizes that something terrible has happened there. The ancient creatures take out the soldiers again and Jack manages to get only Daniel away. The colonel heads to the rocket to destroy the ring and prevent the aliens from entering their world, but the safe is empty and the boys are surrounded. The creatures bring the hostages to the throne room and kneel before a throne on which the god Ra descends. He shows Jack a rocket and hints that for trying to destroy this world, he will punish the colonel. Jack tries to fight back but nothing comes out he ends up on the floor and the king's guards try to finish him off. The main villain stops the battle and orders him to send the colonel to the dungeon while he deals with the professor who wears his pendant around his neck. The boys who followed Jack the whole time stayed outside, studying the military's weapons and supplies. Noticing that the alien ships were headed for their village to destroy all of its inhabitants, the boys abandoned their occupation and rushed to help, but it was too late. When Daniel opened his eyes, he saw that he was lying in a sarcophagus. The alien in a human body confesses to the scientist that he likes watching people, but despite this he is going to send a nuclear missile back to the human world, amplifying its effect with a mineral that will increase the explosion a hundredfold. Upon learning of Ra's plans, Shaori tells the teenagers in his village the legend of the aliens and urges them to refuse to continue being slaves. The whole town gathers in the square. The executioner issues a spear to Jackson and orders him to destroy O'Neill and his army. Shah Uri from the crowd drops Daniel a signal and he attacks the king. Chaos ensues in the square allowing the team to escape the alien gunfire. Jack has to tell his friends about the bomb he left near the gate, which Ra is going to launch back into their world to destroy it. Ra at this time thinks differently and prepares to attack to do away with the unruly men. To punish the guards who let the prisoners escape, the villain publicly executes one of them. From Shaori's tribesmen, Jackson learns that the girl has lied to everyone and now he is considered her husband. Daniel finally finds the missing piece and tells his friends that they can get out. But first, the company heads downtown to free the locals from the evil ruler and his servants. Dot. The elder tries to stop them, fearing that it will bring his people more trouble, but Jackson shows the chief that beneath the iron masks are ordinary people. Ross sees a caravan carrying minerals and he orders the bomb to be taken to the gate. Once inside, the slaves bravely throw off their hoods, revealing that Jack's army is hiding underneath. The villains fight back with planes, and taking advantage of the fact that all the military are outside, Ra orders the bomb to be sent to Earth immediately. But Jack proves to be faster he triggers the mechanism and orders Daniel to go home to destroy the gate while he stays in this world and smashes the portal here. Jackson prepares to fly, but Shaori is injured and the scientist decides to save his friend lifting her into his arms. He enters Ra's elevator to heal the girl in a magical sarcophagus. Jack has to deal with the villains alone, guarding the portal. In the meantime, a fight continues outside and one of the local guys dies before he can make it to cover. To save the rest of the guys, Jack's soldiers distract the villains, and Daniel fails to escape unnoticed and falls into Ra's hands. At the last moment, the professor manages to summon a magical elevator and so he manages to escape with his beloved, as well as crushing the warrior who almost destroyed Jack. Noticing that the explosion is just over a minute away, Jack tries to stop the bomb, but it doesn't work. Ra sees the village chief leading thousands of people to the pyramid. To keep them from ruining his plans, the villain closes his ship and lifts it into the sky. Upon learning of this, Jackson comes up with a plan by launching an elevator. He sends a rocket up the ship to the king, ending him once and for all. After celebrating his victory, O'Neill bids farewell to the ancient inhabitants and Daniel, who has decided to stay in this world and build his happiness with Shaori. Dot. As parting, the professor gives his friend the pendant to return to Catherine. Thanks for watching please like share and subscribe my channel.